This is a medical and biology tutorial 2 presented by the SH Charles V with reference Langman Medical and Biology by T.W. Sattler. Here we are going to continue with the laterality of the embryo. So we said that we have the embryo having the different laterality. At this portion we have the oropharyngeal membrane, this portion we have the crocker membrane. You need to know that this is a primitive node with a primitive streak. The primitive node is going to produce certain substances. So from A, we see the FGF is going to be secreted by the node. And the primitive streak, so all of them are going to produce FGF8. So you, you are going to have the response, a member of TGF beta superfamily and the nodal um, proteins to accumulate the left side near the node. So at this left side, you are going to have the secretion of the FGF8 that are going to accumulate at the level of the nodal. So you have this portion now. This is what is going to produce now a stimulation on the nodal cells. So when you are going to produce your FGF, FG8 from the node and the primitive streak, all the nodal cells are going to have a stimulation on the left side. So this is going to produce now um, the serotonin is going to be produced which is going to act to produce the, the FG8 which is going to produce the nodal left T2 and is going to produce the pit X2 all this is going to establish the, um, the left side of the body so to show the left side of the body this um, part is going to be established now in the right side of the body you need to know that there exists the monoamino oxidase or the, the monoamino oxidase enzyme so this enzyme is going to degrade um, the, the serotonin and you see that this pathway is going to be declined so this pathway is the main pathway involved in the um, formation of the left side of the body but now in this portion on the right side you have monoamino oxidase a or monoamino oxidase which is going to now um, decline the serotonin which is going to act on this pathway so this is what is going to reduce to, to, to cancel the pathway and show that this is the right side <clears throat> So now, this is the next part. Here, you still have the same thing she initially shown. At this portion, you're going to have the second, the second G York sac. Here, you have the amniotic um, cavity. You have the connective stalk. You have the mama, maternal sinus entering inside the trophoblastic lacrimae. Here, you have the extra embryonic cavity. Now, it's going to be called the coronic cavity. We've initially said that the extra embryonic um, um, somatic mesoderm was formed from the, um, the cytotrophoblast and the hypoblast. So these cells here are going to contain the are going to contain genetic material similar to the cells present in the embryo. So collecting the cells at the level of the chorion here is similar to collecting the cells in the embryo. So we realize that when um, say biopsies are performed to collect the cells of the colon, it can it can allow you to to visualize a good genetic material of the embryo inside. So this is why the extra embryonic um, the extra embryonic somatic mesoderm is highly used in um, in, in um, examinations. So now here you have the now here you are going to have a development of you have already seen the development of the embryo to form the trilaminal disc now again by the third week we have the development of the of the um the trophoblast to form the different sinusoid and villi so at first you have a primary villi which is going to have the cytotrophoblast and the syncytotrophoblast as such after that you are going to have the secondary villi having inside the cytotrophoblast and syncytotrophoblast with the mesodermal core we had we see that here we find the cytotrophoblast, the syncytotrophoblast, and here the mesodermal core, which is formed from the hypoblast and syncytotrophoblast. So now, after that, you are going to see inside there, you are going to see the villus capillaries. So from here, you have small villus capillaries which are entering as such. So these are the tertiary villus. So this uh, this is these are the these are the um and the the these are the um the extra embryonic 
mesodème. This is the ancient brain mesodème. The cytotrophoblasts and the um, the syncytotrophoblasts. All of them are going to have again this small villus, and this villus here are going to be called the tertiary villus. Here is going to be amniotic cavity, and here is going to be a definitive yolksa. So from here you can see the growth now in the villi. The villi are going to grow from primary villus, secondary villus to tertiary villus, still in the third week of um, ovulation of this still 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 in the topic of gestation instead so if you also have this you have the endometrium we see that the cells in the primary villus we see that these are going to be the arteries are going to come from the embryo the arteries come from the embryo are going to be in contact are not going to be in direct contact with the uh, maternal sinusoids these are the maternal sinusoids here the blood from the um, maternal body so we see that they're not going to be in direct contact but they're going to be separated by three layers the first layer is going to come from the exo is going to come from the um, extra embryonic splash uh, extra embryonic um, somatic mesodem this is the first layer here extra embryonic um, somatic mesodem the second layer which is going to separate the blood of the the embryo to the blood of the mother is going to be the cytotrophoblast or now called the cytotrophocyte when they grow to maturation they're going to be called a cytotrophocyte so now the third layer separating it are going to be the syncytotrophoblast and the syncytotrophoblast are the ones which are in direct contact with the blood of the mother so now this is the third to the eighth week of, of the embryonic period so the third to the eighth week of embryonic period what occurs so you are going to see that here you are going to have a new relation and um, gastrulation gastrulation are going to be the formation of the different somite why new relation so you are going to see here that there's going to be the new relation and gastrulation gastrulation is formation of different somites and new relation is the formation of the notochord with the neural plate so we see that here you are going to have the um, the primitive node you are going to have the primitive streak here by 16 days here you have the cut amnion and all this by 18 days you see that the primitive node become more prominent and this portion here is going to descend to become much more pointed so this is the posterior portion so now the next thing which is going to occur is that you are going to have the formation of somite we initially said that this portion is going to be the ectoderm formed from the epiblast now we see that at the level of the primitive streak the mesoderm is going to migrate to come to the lateral side so the mesoderm is what is going to form this part here so we have this part here which are the part of the mesoderm so this is already in, involved in the formation of the somite so at the cut edge we have the neural plate here the upper portion is, is going to be differentiated into the neural plate and the neural plate are going to form two neural folds so these two neural folds are going to come inside here you are going to have a neural growth and no more the primitive streak at this upper portion you are going to have a neural growth and this lower portion you are going to have the primitive streak containing the mesoderm at this upper portion now the mesoderm are going to by 19 days you have no somite yet but by uh, 20 days these are the numbers of somites which are already present high number of somites yet the somites are still very low so we have the cut edge you have the newer um, growth here you have the somites here you have the primitive streak at this location here so now the more it grows you see the neural um, growth are going to form neural folds so these are neural folds here and they are going to the more they are trying to um, to enclose to each other and you realize that the more they are enclosing the more the somites are the mesoderm is taking the position upward so we are going to visualize it in the cross section of the embryo so this is the um, horizontal section of, this is the upper section of the embryo so when we cut and visualize the upper part of the embryo you see that the neural folds are here and they are trying to come together to form the um, the neural tube so the neural folds are going to come together to form the neural tube and at the apex of the neural fold we are going to have the formation of the neural crest cells which are going to be involved in the formation of the, uh, the, the peripheral nervous tissues as we are going to see in central nervous system development 
So you have neural fault here coming. At this portion, you have the pericardial bulge. You need to know that the the, the heart is going to is formed mainly by muscles. So this is why you have pericardial bulge here. Here you have great numbers of somites by 22 days. So at this you have again you see that it is much more enclosing. So here you are going to have the neural tube which is closing at the upper and the lower portion and now certain diseases are coming through when the neural tube does not close and these um, congenital diseases are called the neural tube defect the main neural tube defect when these two portions do, do not close because these are the neural folds which are supposed to be um, enclosed together which are supposed to fuse together to form the neural tube but if the neural tube does not um, enclose together you are going to have neural tube defect the main neural tube defect are the anencephaly when this upper portion does not enclose and you are also going to have spinal bifida when this lower portion does not enclose anencephaly you see that the person is not going to have a brain because this upper portion are involved in the formation of the brain and uh, spinal bifida you see that the person is not going to have um, the vertebra, the posterior vertebral column of the lumbar region, because this location here is a level of the lumbar region. So the spinal bifida can exist in, in many other aspects. You have spinal bifida or quarter, which where the person does not have um, many high high significant symptoms. We have spinal bifida. We have meningoencephal. We have meningomyelocell. We have meningo. <coughs> You can have meningocel, you have meningomyelocel, you have rashidis. These are different forms of spinal bifida. So now we have the anterior neuropore here. We see that the more we now see laterally, we see that this upper portion of not yet enclosed. You have the anterior neuropore, posterior neuropore. Now you can see the pharyngeal arches, which are other somites, pericardial bulge. These are the different somites which you have at the level of 25 days. Here you have the lens plaque or the heart bulge and the vitiline tube and all that. Here is the connection with the York sac. And you need to know the York sac is, is a very good constituent which is going to consist of food material. And the York sac is the one which is giving food to the baby when the, um, the, when the, the villus have not yet um, taken contact with the mother cells. So by the first week, which is the first one to seven day, all of the cells are taking their, their nutrient mostly from the York sac, even the second week when the virus are you not yet formed. Now when the virus are formed now, the York sac has already, the York sac has, uh, the, has the reduced function and it's mainly going to be involved in the formation of gastrointestinal system. So now you have this, you have the neural crest, you see that this was the neural fold at this location. So now here is a cross section where you can see the upper and lower part. So this was your neural fold at the upper part and this was your um, York sac at the lower part. So what occurs is that the neural fold are going to bind to each other and the upper part of the neural fold is going to contain neural crest. So when they bind, they're going to form this neural tube here with the neural crest coming to form the dorsal ganglion and the tissues which are involved in the suprarenal gland and also going to be, um, this is involved in the middle of the suprarenal gland, also going to form the priority ganglion and even the anterior ganglion of the of the gastrointestinal tract. So all of these tissues are going to be involved with, um, from the neural, are going to be the neural crest cells. So now we have this, from here we have a diagram which shows the main nerve involved with the different pharyngeal arches. You need to know that the first pharyngeal arch and all, all the muscles which are derived from the first pharyngeal arch with the central location of the first pharyngeal arch are coming from, are innervated by the fascial, um, by the, the trigeminal nerve, cranial nerve 5. All the muscles coming from the second pharyngeal arch with the sensation, sensation coming from the second pharyngeal arch are going to be innervated by the fascial nerve, cranial nerve 7. All the, all the muscles coming from the third pharyngeal arch with the sensory location are going to come from the glossopharyngeal nerve innervation. And all the muscles from the fourth to sixth pharyngeal arch and the sensory location of fourth to sixth pharyngeal arch are going to be innervated by the vagus nerve. So now this is going to be the neural tube defect. In this case, you have an anencephaly, and most of the neural tube defect can be treated when the, the mother is given folic acid. So this is neural tube defect where you have anencephaly, and here is what you have spinal bifida. 
the lower part of the 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 lower neural pore, the posterior neural pore has not enclosed. <coughs> so you see here how we first have this upper and lower part. Now the neural fold are going to be formed. As the neural fold are going to be formed, we have an enclosed. So you see that they are going to enclose slightly. And as they are enclosing, you realize that the somite is taking much more position, and this is going down as such. So this is the continuation. You have the neural growth at this location. You have the ventral somite wall. You have the notochord here. The notochord is used to, to find the laterality. is used in the laterality and in order to maintain um, the direction involved with the movement of the cells. So this is what is the importance of the notochord. So you have the intraembryonic cavity. Intraembryonic cavity is coming inside here. You have the dorsal outer. So this is a, another form of view with the scleroderma at this location. So now here <coughs> you are going to have the expression of patterns of genes to regulate somite differentiation. So this pattern of gene, you see that it first um, is sonic hedgehog and login. So the sonic hedgehog and logins secreted by the notochord. So the, you say, we initially said that the notochord was the one which is, was involved with to, to maintain the direction of movement of the cells. So this is one which is the notochord is used in order to maintain the direction of movement of the cells. So the sonic hedgehog and the logins are going to be stimulated, are going to be produced by the notochord and this inferior portion of the neural tube. All of this is going to be uh, is going to move to the floor plate of the neural and the floor plate to cause the ventral part of the somite to form the scleroderm. So this ventral part of somite is going to form the scleroderm and to express the Pax X1. So all of this they are going to express, which in turn control chondrogenesis and vertebrae form information. So so this it all starts with the the SHH, which are the the um, the sonic hedgehog and the nogins, which are coming from these two parts, all stimulating the Pax X1, and then the Pax X1, this SSH is also going to stimulate the the Mi5 here. So the Mi5 here, which is going to do this or lower part is going to cause the formation of the vertebrae. So now we have the dorsometer. This other part here are going to have the formation of the muscles. So stimulated by the BMP coming from the intraembryonic cavity. Also we have the WNT stimulating this one here. So this one is going to mostly be the um, the the Mi5 here is going to be involved here with the muscle specific gene. So this is a more specific gene for muscle precursor cells. You have this other Pax3 involved with also muscles and also have the Pax3 which um, demarcate the demo myotome. So this Pax3 is for demo myotome and this mild, um, M M Y O D is involved with the inhibition. So all these are the muscle cells. Here is a muscle cell, here is a muscle cell and here is a dermis. So now you are going to have a cross section. You see that the, when the cross section is continuing, you see that there is a removal of the endoderm. The more they are continuing, they, they see turn, the more there is a removal of the endoderm as such. And it's going to become this. So you are going to have the dorsal mesentery here. You are going to have the amniotic cavity encircling all the embryo. Here the embryo is going to be found here. You have the mesonephros. Here you have the extra embryonic cavity here you have the wall of the girl of the gut you have the serous membrane you have the pareta membrane you have the visceral mesoderm here so this is how the um, blood vessels are going to be formed blood vessels are formed by two main pathways we have this first pathway here which is involved in the formation of blood vessels and you have the other pathway here which is involved with the binding of form to blood vessels so these are the two main pathways involved in the blood vessels. So the first pathway here is going to be called the vasculogenesis. Vasculogenesis is when you form the mesoderms come and cluster. They, they are going to cluster together 
so due to fgf2 and the fgf receptor you have the vegf and the vgf receptor all these are going to cause a clustering so you see that all the the, the cells the mesenchymal cells are going to be differentiated into the different cells the hemangioblast cells the mesoderm cells are going to differentiate into hemangioblast cells after the interaction of the fgf2 the fgf2 um, um, ligands so this is with the this is going to cause now um formation of hemangioblast which are going to form blood red blood cells and other endothelial cells which are going to cover it to form this is going to be the process of vasculogenesis now in the process now the second process androgenesis where the arteries and the veins bind to form the different capillaries here you have the vegf which is going to cause to to, to cause this pathway <coughs> So all these are going to be the blood vessels which are going to be formed now in the embryo. So now from here you can see a clinical manifestation. The main tumor involved with the, the, the fetus. This is the main tumor involved in the fetus called an a hemangioma. So the hemangioma is the main tumor involved in all fetus and it's going to be characterized by a dark um, site or a white site, white red patch which is produced on the body. So you have this, you have the amniotic cavity, you have the endoderm. So all this is now this is longitudinal section. So you have endoderm, you have the ectoderm, you have the androgenic cluster, you have the O pharyngeal membrane. Yeah. So here you are going to have the foregut, you have the heart tube, you have the pericardial the cavity, all this. So you see that this the movement direction of embryo is going to be in this this location here so it's going to move in this direction going to move in this direction <clears throat> so here you are going to have this so as it move it's going to continue moving as such and there's going to be a removal of the yolk sac as such so you have the allantois at this position you are going to have the mid gut here you are going to have the liver here you are going to have the lungs and here you are going to have the remnant of oropharyngeal oropharynx so on this section you see that there is the turn in this direction and you are going to form this you are going to lastly form this with the parietal mesoderm outside and here you are going to have the embryonic um, body cavity here <coughs> so embryonic body cavity or oh, this is the intra embryonic column so you see that initially was turning and removing this other portion here so this is the amniotic cavity here <coughs> So now this other section is going to show you the stomodium. So the gastrointestinal tract, we have the pharyngeal gut. Here you are going to have the lung blood. Here you are going to have the stomach, get the liver, the gallbladder, the vitline tube, the allantois, the cracker, the hind gut, and all the main structures involved. With so the pharyngeal gut is going to differentiate now to give the pharyngeal pouches with the with the pharyngeal arch, which are going to be involved with the different cranial nerve um, innervation so we have this so these are the embryo view with the, with the different um, human embryo we have different views which are shown and such so the gut tube and body cavity from here you can see you have seen the main in the main thing involved with the general embryology and you can say thanks for your kind attention please don't forget to like and subscribe for science remakers thank you